All right, my Blade 2 review. So, Blade teams up with Daryl Dixon to stop the vampire zombie apocalypse. Uh, that, that's not what happens. Blade 2 starring uh, Wesley Snipes, Norman Reedus, uh, Chris Christopherson, and Ron Perlman, as well as some other names that I'm not going to do the research for. But... This film goes in a more more of a horror direction, I guess you would say, than the previous film. Despite the previous film being a vampire film, this one feels more like a horror film. Uh, now, it builds upon the world that was uh, incredibly captured that in the first film. Uh, Blade, the first film, had this incredible vampire subculture that existed in plain sight amongst our society and this one just adds more layer and depth to that it explores something that the previous film actually touched on which was that sometimes when a vampire is turned they come back wrong well this explores one of those I guess viruses or mutations well in the first film I believe it was a mutation but here it's it's kind of a virus uh, and the carrier, Nomac, he's he's the carrier of, of this new virus that spreads like wildfire. It, it causes them to hunger more often, and because of that, their numbers grow drastically overnight. Because not only do they hunger for humans, but they hunger for vampires too. And anybody can be turned. So... This film opens up with Blade uh, hunting down vampires, some incredible action scenes and incredible music all throughout this film. Blade is hunting down vampires, though, to find Whisker's whereabouts and retrieve him. Uh, he does. Whisker, in the previous film, was attacked by vampires, bitten, left for dead, and thought to have killed himself. That's how it appeared, anyway, to the audience. As you heard a gunshot going off in the distance, that that made made one think that he blew his own brains out. So, in here, they take a step back on that. They bring Whisker back into the game. But Blade's already working with this new younger partner. Who, who he's pretty much like a younger Whisker, but much more like punkish in attitude and. He is incredible at his job. That he implants the idea in Blade's head early on that that he's never seen somebody stray from the hunger. We're referring to Wesker, and he implants the idea in Blade's head that maybe Wesker is rogue. So that that sort of theme is way weighing on. Uh, Wesley Snipes blades mine throughout the film while it's kind of a misdirection because ultimately Norman Reedus' character turns out to be a traitor. Scud turns out to be a traitor. A familiar that was working with the vampires to be turned eventually once his work paid off. So Blade has to uh, early on in the film Blade their safe house or their wet uh, armory whatever you want to call it is infiltrated by vampires nisa who is the daughter of a vampire we'll get to in in a second here yeah, of an elder vampire a very important vampire she herself was born a vampire so they're there to make a truce make an alliance with blade so he blade and blade is just calmly intense and and just incredible. Wesley Snipes does such an amazing job as Blade with the fight scenes, the action choreography, but also the acting. Like, So he goes into this situation not knowing if the vampires are just going to slaughter him, and he points that out. Like, he's got a bomb strapped to him in case, in case that's what they're actually planning to do. So he goes and meets with this elder vampire who tells him all about this strain of virus that that is that aligns both of their causes because this is something that will overcome the human race and the vampire race 
this strain uh, causes them to hunger more often and if they don't eat that often they will die so they have to dra they have to attack people constantly but they're growing in numbers because they're turning people so blade has to team up with the blood pack which is essentially a team of specialist vampires trained to one down uh, one day like hunt down blade and kill him well ron perlman comes off like a dick from the starred blade blade pops a bomb on the back of his head and uh, it just humiliates him in front of the rest of the blood pack. So Blade and the blood pack go out for their first hunt. And during their first hunt, Whiskers disappears from his post. Further, further like cementing the idea to Blade that maybe Scud is right about him. So that conflict continues to play out through the film while they face down their first batch of Reapers, which is what the mutated strand of vampires are call, called and when their mouths open to feed off vampires it, it's incredibly creepy it looks awesome it looks amazing these vampires look very intimidating look very threatening very imposing it's so well captured what's his name uh Keldroma, or, 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 <laughs> what the director's name? He's a pretty high-profile director. Um, Gilmore Del Toro. So yeah, I got that really wrong. But anyways, this this director is a badass. Always is. Uh, so they get their first attack on with the Reapers and it does not go well for them. There are some incredibly tense scenes, some awesome action scenes. One of the uh, blood pack end up dying. Another one ends up bitten and effectively acts like a Trojan horse, keeping it to himself, not telling them, knowing what's going to happen. We get to see that Wesker was actually gone from his post because he was capturing one of the Reapers. Though that that doubt is still there in Blade's mind. But this leads them to go down into the sewers where they learn that's where that's where the majority of these Reapers are. That they do an autopsy on this one, they figure out how it all works, how there's bone built up around his heart, and that their weapons, everything that normally kills vampires isn't gonna work here except for sunlight. So they have to design some new weaponry. Uh, Wesker and Scud team up for that one, and it goes well. So they all go down in, into the sewers together, but it goes south pretty quickly because Ron Perlman and one of the other, one of the other Blood Pack members decide that since they lost one of theirs and it's no big deal to Blade that they're gonna take out Wesker. So one of them starts beating on Wesker. Why? Ron Perlman looks away, turns the cheek. Uh, the vampire that gets bit turns on his team member. She races up a ladder. And uh, they had to go out in daylight because that was their only weapon, which puts the vampires at a strong disadvantage that there's no escape for them. And I'm not exactly sure if this woman was just in the heat of the moment thinking that she was going to race out go out the manhole and escape to safety or if she was intentionally committing suicide because the vampire who turned was her lover. So not only did that vampire that turned take out another vampire, but he also chased her up the ladder. She moved the manhole and it ended up burning both of them to a crisp. So they were pretty much down to Ron Perlman, the dickhead beating up Wesker and the daughter of the main vampire. And you get this incredibly intense scene as all these Reapers, there's just so many of them flooding the sewers. These guys can climb up walls and all kinds of crazy shit. And you get this badass scene where they all have to team up. They plus to set off a bomb that the lever was broke. Ron Perlman ditched it. The other vampire that was beaten on Wesker got taken down by all the Reapers. Ron Perlman, Blade, and Nessa all meet up and Ron Perlman intentionally misleads Blade to go and to try to 
triggered the bomb, not telling him that the handle was broken until he's already split out from them at the bomb and it's too late. But Blade gets it to work and saves them all at the last minute. They barely survive, like Misa has to dive into the water and Ron Perlman was about to be massacred by the Reapers. It was incredibly intense scenes, beautiful, dark, edgy, like very horror-esque like. And ultimately though, Blade Nessa is badly wounded and Blade lets her feed off him. And then he gets taken down by the vampire's team and his lawyer and goes back there to find out that hey this whole thing was a setup all along no no mac gave wesker a ring and told him to tell blade about what's really going on so no mac turns out to be the main vampire's son and this whole thing was known by him and and he's just planning to ditch like they take Blade, they capture Blade, they drain Blade, leave him weak, but Wesker manages to free Blade. Nessa finds out that her father's just a dirtbag, and they find out that Scud is a traitor. He was familiar all along when he tried to Blade tried to blow off Ron Perlman's head. Nope, it was a it was a dud, or so Scud thought until he took the bomb, put it in his hand, and started gloating about it, and Blade blew his ass up. So Norman Reedus got his ass blown to bits. Uh, but Wessler and Blade were very badass in this, you know, especially when Blade falls in that pool of blood. He gets incredibly strong, and we have a kick-ass, action-packed action scene with some badass music overplaying it. This movie is filled with great Great horror elements, the prosthetics, the way the the uh, Reapers look, the, the way of the the tension they bring, the numbers, the growth. It's all incredibly just badass. And Nomak, the ultimate villain of the film, uh, is surprisingly good. Like, very fast, very strong. Multiple times him and Blade get in a fight and... A blade struggles really hard with this guy, and, and you get some tragic scenes in here with what everything that the ultimate ending. It it's kind of tragic, but then it also comes full circle back to the beginning when Blade told this one vampire that he would come back for him, and he did. So this movie, this movie was pretty damn good. I mean, the fight choreography, Wesley Snipes is just a fucking champion. At this shit. I mean, uh, the vampire weapon, weaponry, the arsenal, the, the all the gear that they use in here. It's just such a badass movie franchise. Well, until the third one, which <laughs> which is a disaster, and I'll be reviewing that one here soon. But Blade Two. Badass film. I'd give it an eight out of ten. I wouldn't say it as good as the first one because I don't. Something felt slightly off to me. I couldn't place what it was. Maybe it was the lack, lack of strong lang language. I don't know if they had the same amount of strong language, but, but the first one felt like it was much more like strong language, sexual situations, much more like straight up violent. And this one. This one feels, I don't know, this one feels more like a horror movie than the first one. So it's very good. Music, themes, action, uh, the sets, the production values, everything is just exceptional. So I'd give this film an easy 8 out of 10. Uh, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. Uh, give me a ball boy thumbs up. It helps promote my videos. I'm not monetized. If you want to support my channel, check out my PayPal me link. Stay awesome. Rock on.